Hello everyone, so today I want to share with you my 2017-2018 kindergarten curriculum. I got so many emails, how can I start homeschooling? If you're starting a kindergarten, the first thing that you want to do is get um, your state standards um, for kindergarten. So every state has their standards. I keep my standards in this little folder and um, I just make sure that she's learning all of the standards that for reading, writing, and math that she's supposed to be learning for kindergarten. Um, that's one way to start. Then for curriculum, there's so much curriculum out there. There's hundreds and hundreds of curriculum. For, for, for like third grade and below, I'll tell you, I try to focus on the core and I keep it really simple. Um, reading, writing, and math. Reading, writing, and math set the foundation for all other subject areas. If your child fails in one of these areas, they're going to have trouble in all other areas. Um, so I focus on making them strong at reading, writing, and math. Um, I see videos of other homeschoolers where they're teaching kindergarten students like social studies, uh, grammar, um, language arts, science, all types of things. That's really not needed for kindergarten. I'm gonna share with you guys what I have here for kindergarten. Um, what I'm using for the core. So for writing, I have my morning uh, letters and numbers workbook. Um, this is a dry erase program that I have here and it introduces one letter and one number a day in fun ways that the child um, can do it. And they can trace it um, and they do hands-on activities with these and I'm gonna show my child using this at the end of the video so that you can see how it's used. I like it because um, it's dry erase and the child can do it over and over and over. I find that when you write, you buy a handwriting program, not only is it expensive, but you um, the child finishes it right away or also what happens is that if a child needs more practice with a ladder, you really can't get that practice. So this, you can keep doing over and over and over. All right, the next thing that I have here is my phonics program. I am really big on Alpha Phonics. I absolutely love this program. I used it with my, old, my oldest child and she really did well in this program. Um, why do I like it? It's because it's really hardcore phonics. You will not find pictures in this book. These are easy lessons to introduce the 44 sounds of the English language. Um, as you can see, that is one lesson right there, lesson one. Um, and they're really simple lessons um, there's 120 lessons to introduce the 44 sounds of the English language. The reason I love this program also is because you don't have to buy like part one, part two, part three, part four, like other programs that you have to do. Um, it's inexpensive, you can get it for like 20 something dollars. I'll link it below in the description box if you guys are interested. Um, I haven't started with my kindergartner yet because we're still going over, we're doing review the first month of this year. Um, reviewing reviewing things that we went over last year before we start the program but we're going to dive right in also i want to mention that with this program what i do is i take two years to finish this program i go really slow because by the time the child finishes this program they're reading at a really high reading level as you can see they're reading some really large words you don't have to finish it in kindergarten you can take two years to finish it and that's what i do i like going slow i like making sure that the child is learning all of the phonetic rules um, and it brings the teacher's manual inside at the back. It tells you how to introduce each lesson um, and what to say for each lesson. It's a great program and I really recommend it. Um, for math, we love using Math You See for the early grades. Um, math You See is a great program because it's hands-on. It brings the blocks so the child is learning math in a hands-on way. I love it. It brings math alive. Um, in the young years, when children are very young, abstract thinking is something that's not developed. With Matthew C, you have the blocks. All of the lessons are done with blocks. It brings the lessons alive. Um, I really love this program, and I'm gonna continue using it with future children as well. Um, here we have Get Set for the Code, and this is a Explode the Code series. And this is a little workbook that she's gonna finish quick. It's like a phonics-based. Um, it goes into every single letter in fun ways. So they do coloring and circling and different things like that just to go over each of the letter sounds. I love this little book. Um, I also am big on critical thinking. Um, this is from the critical thinking company, Can You Find Me? And this is gonna be focusing on building thinking skills. I think critical thinking skills are crucial in all subject areas and in life. 
Um, it has reading, math, science, and social studies. There's no writing, there's no coloring, nothing. It's just you reading little riddles to the child, having them figure things out. It's a good little thing to do with dads when they get back from work or to do with, with mom as well uh, on the sofa, sitting down. Um, it's a fun little thing to do together. You don't have to do it every day, you can just do it a couple times a week. And lastly, we are doing an interactive notebook for the alphabet. This is one my daughter did a couple of years ago. It goes over each of the letters. Uh, they're cutting, they're pasting, they're finding, they're, they're working on all those skills like cutting, pasting, coloring. Those are all skills that need to be learned, that needs to be mastered in kindergarten, and this provides that help. Um, I'll link it below in the description box so that you guys can see. They learn about um, letters, capital letters, lowercase letters, they find the letters, they write the letters. It's a great way to go through the entire alphabet and then it's a beautiful keepsake. And then at the end of the year, you can just keep this for when they grow up, they can see the little alphabet notebook that they created. And that's it, you guys. That is my entire kindergarten program. Now, that's the core. Now, I implement a read aloud program that I'm gonna be sharing with you in another video. Um, my read aloud program is basically me reading aloud um, about literature, about science, about civics. So for science, I focus on interest led. So if I know that my children are interested in ladybugs, we'll, read, we'll get a whole bunch of books about ladybugs, we'll do projects on ladybugs, we might even get some ladybugs and observe them in a little, in a little bug jar. If they're interested in learning about ants, we'll learn about ants, we'll watch documentaries about ants. We will um, maybe build an ant farm and so on. Um, for history, for civics, uh, for social studies, we do basically just civics, learning about your community, community helpers, um, what the different jobs are in your community, uh, about Native Americans, all different types of things, just, and I just read aloud. And I do uh, crafts um, to bring those subjects alive. Um, and that is my read aloud program. I just read a lot. I don't do any sit-down work. I really don't believe that little children that are third grade and below should be sitting down doing a lot of sit down work and writing. They should be outside playing and I focus on um, my kids playing. She will be done with this in an hour and then she'll be done and she'll be playing throughout the day and running and having fun. And when I mean an hour, she's taking little breaks here and there because little kids this age, they don't have really large attention spans. And I can tell you guys that following this program, my children um, have been doing really well when I compare them to public school students, they are advanced um, and they are reading at higher levels. They are doing math at higher levels because I'm focusing on the core. And then all of the, all the other subjects are read alouds, are interest led. Um, I also have these little workbooks that I get at the dollar store. And this is just for her to do when I'm working with her older sister. And she's not gonna be finishing all of these. This is just for me to have, for her to do like tracing numbers, tracing letters. Um, for her to have something to do. She's not gonna be finishing every single one of these workbooks. She just gets to choose whatever she wants to do from these workbooks, if she even wants to. Because when I work with her older sister, I also have her doing other little things um, to keep her busy. All right, so I also have these Bob's books, set one, set one, and set two. And these are decodable um, phonetic readers. So once I see that she's doing really well with her program, with her Alpha Phonics program, I'll start introducing some readers. Um, and I will not only be doing these, I'll go to the library and I'll get more readers um, to keep practicing those, those skills. I like these decodable readers because they're phonetic. They're not sight words. Um, I want my child to, to really learn how to read phonetically, not by sight reading. And that is really important. That's why I like the phonetic decodable readers by um, the Bob's books. Okay, so that is the program in a nutshell. And so it takes her about an hour to finish this. And when I mean an hour, she's taking little breaks here and there. And then she's off to play and to do all the fun things that she wants to do. Um, build forts, play with blocks, play with Play-Doh, all types of things. Um, along with this, I like doing hands-on activities. So I am really big on Montessori-based hands-on activities. It brings learning alive, it's engaging, um, it makes learning fun. And they can learn so many different concepts uh, with their little hands, working on their little hands. Um, it also helps with their fine motor skills for writing. Um, so I keep them on that shelf back there and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how I organize the shelf, how I organize my Montessori uh, inspired activities. Um, let me know if this is something that you guys wanna see. 
uh, in future videos if you want to see my kindergartner be uh, working on these activities. Um, um, so in the description below, I'm going to be sharing with you guys all of the resources here so that you know where to find them. I'm going to be sharing with you guys uh, a video on how I taught my three-year-old to read in a very simple way. Um, you don't have to pay to, to teach your child how to read. Before I am even starting the Alpha Phonics program, I already taught her how to read two and three letter words. Very easy. Anybody can do it. You don't have to pay someone to teach you or to know. It's easy. Um, and I want to share that knowledge with you guys because anyone can teach their child to read. It's not rocket science and it's easy. Um, so I think that's it guys. Um, now I'm going to show Iris trying some of the activities so that you can see a real kindergartner doing some of these activities. Now she's a young kindergartner, so you, she looks a little small, but she definitely is doing kindergarten this year. All right, let me show you, let me bring her in the video and show her, her doing some of the activities. Until the next time, bye. One, two, three, four. Where's eight? Go ahead and trace the eight. What does pear start with? Can you tell me? Pa. Pa. Okay, so let's write pa there. Write your P right under the pear. Okay, let's go to the next one now. The what does pencil start with? What does pencil start with? Okay, let's write your P under it. Okay, what is that called? Rainbow. Ra ra rainbow. So that does that start with P? Yeah. What are the next one? What is that called? The next thing. Pop, pop, peanuts. Okay, does that start with P? Mm -hmm. Okay, write a P right underneath it. Okay, and the next one is what? What is that called? Television. Does what does television start with? Ta. Does does television start with P? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. So for writing, I also gave her some type of sentence to copy. Very simple, like two or three letter sentences. Dog ran. So she just copies it on top of the line here. By the end of the year, your kindergarten students should be writing their own sentences. Even if they are not spelling it correctly, even if they're just um, 
sounding it out however it sounds to them that's perfectly fine but they should be writing their own sentences I also want to show you guys this um, this book here is called My First Writing Prompts Journal and I use this one with um, my oldest and it gives little writing prompts that they could do. On Saturdays they like to go to the zoo and they pick out whatever they want. So I'm planning to get this for Iris um, towards the middle of the year. She could write her own little uh, sentences as well. And then at the end you can have a nice little keepsake. And this is by uh, Lakeshore Learning. Okay Iris, you wanna go ahead and write your dog Rand sentence? Go ahead. Okay, so here Iris is doing a matching activity in which she's matching a lowercase with uppercase. Um, and this is a Montessori hands-on activity. As, you, as I mentioned before, she does some Montessori hands-on activities. And I found this mat online. I'll link it below if you'd like to get it for free. Um, I hope you guys all enjoyed. That's an M, honey. Mmm. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, look at the description be uh, look at the description box below so you can see any resources that I mentioned in the video. Until the next time, bye girls! What are you girls finding in there, huh? Did you find anything? Uh, what is it? It's moving. And it's a pill bug. Pill bug? Let me see. It's very small, so I'm gonna show you guys what is left. Um, one big thing, one big source of clutter was their stuffed animals. I got rid of three uh, large bags of stuffed animals. And these are the only ones that are left. These are the beanie boots that